Hello everybody, my name is Professor Sabuna Isaac Barry and welcome back to Physics. So today we're going to be looking at physics to number 138. So we're going to be looking at the derivation of pulse velocity. Well, what is the derivation of pulse velocity? First, let's say we have a rope that has a disturbance that causes it to have a pulse. So this, doesn't, uh, this pulse doesn't have to be a continuous sinusoidal wave. Let's say it's just a pulse like this. Uh, so I have to start from here and let's say there's a disturbance that causes a pulse to be moving at speed V. So, uh, with now, it's going with velocity V. Our question here is, what is V? And we are going to find that answer today, my friends. So, uh, we're actually not going to be using our old little trick, well, which was, I believe, omega over k whole squared. No, we're actually going to be using something different this time. So, uh, let's start. By, well, we can't really just start by telling you the equation. So let's start by deriving the equation. I mean, this is what you're here for, guessing by the first word of this damn title. So, uh, I believe what we're going to be doing is we should draw the rope. Now, this isn't just a fictitious, uh, massless rope anymore. It's something with the masses, lengths, and distances we care about. So, I'm going to draw a little bit of how I imagine a pulse would look like. So, this is how it looks like. So let's focus on this top bit for a moment. So this is our focus right now. Mm. So let's say we know that there's two uh, tension forces pulling the rope back and forward. Uh, and there is, these are perpendicular to the, this line, this is not pictured exactly straight. This should be slanted a little bit. So please don't uh, uh, irritate me in the comments for that. So this tiny angle we call D theta. This other tiny angle we also call D theta. Now that can't just be all of D theta. So we brought more as well. Let's say that we drew a slope from the beginning of these two and end it when both of these lines meet. Now, <coughs> we split through the middle and we get a sort of radius we can work with. Now, how does this help us? Well, this can help us to find the arc length that's here, which we'll call dl. Well, how do we find the arc length? If you uh, remember one of my early lectures, it was probably either in the 20s or 50s. <coughs> you had a ball, and then you have Two radii, radii, I think that's how you say it. You have theta, and then you have s. 
So in this case, S is going to be the L, of course. So, uh, and we know that mm, we know that DL is going to be equal to theta over 360 times 2 pi. Well, why? Theta divided by 360 is the fraction uh, is the fraction of the radius. The it, a fraction. What do I say? Is the fraction of like the angle being taken up in the circle? I don't know how to say. It. And two pi is, I believe, the unit circumference of a unit circle, and also what three sixty degrees is in radians. So naturally, we could cancel these out due to radians. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. R missing. Oh yeah. Two pi r is the circumference. So that, uh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. I was getting my mind messed up there. That's theta r. So that means that we now know dl to be theta r. So now that we had all our information laid out there for us, let's see what we can do. First of all, I would probably look to Newton's laws for some help. So, the first and third one don't really look of any use to me, but the second one is always helpful. So let's try that one out. Now, since we're obviously not dealing with linear motion, we're going to be using the centripetal acceleration formula. V squared over R. And already we're getting somewhere. So now, what is M? We probably need to simplify that in order to get our answer. Because this isn't very descriptive, especially not the sigma fy. So, let's just cut these down to the base variables. We know, what is M? Well, M is kilos. Now, let's take a supposed variable mu, I think it used to be for the coefficient of friction in physics, but now it's going to be our uh, unit of density per unit meter, density per meter. So it's basically a uh, density per unit uh, length. Sorry, got, uh, got a little bit messed up there. So if this is kilo, uh, kilograms over meter, that means that mu L would be uh, mass, because think about it. That would be kilogram over meter times meter is equal to mass. So that means that we know what M is now, so we can expand our knowledge. Oh yeah, this is DL, meaning it also is, oh yeah, uh, what I forgot to mention, sorry guys, I think what I forgot to mention was that I believe we are subtending two thetas uh, on this side and this side, both. So that means that dl is to, oh no, we're subtending both of these. We know these are d thetas, so we're subtending both to d thetas r because this, uh, uh, this whole arc is subtending twice the amount of data. So we can obviously substitute that as a variable. I don't know, capital capital data for twice the <coughs> data? I don't know. We can't do that right now. <coughs> so that gives us DL. Uh, that gives us data, uh, no, mu DL. So mu 2 D theta uh, rv squared over r. And now finally, to reduce fy to the basic unit will be easy. Because I believe uh, fy is just torque subtended by angle d theta. These two torques are subtended by the angle d theta. So that would be 2t d theta equal to this whole mess.
that's t equals to mu v squared, meaning if we do just do some simple algebra, that gives us v equal t over mu. We can actually do the simple algebra out here if you like. So v squared equal t over mu, meaning v is root t over u. Okay, so that's our new answer for our pivotal question. V is the square root of t divided by mu. Okay.